Before the social discharge, a series of episodes for a podcast called the Pen Pals Podcast had been recorded. These episodes hadn't been released until now. Here are those episodes. The Pen Pals Podcast. I am your host, Tammy Likes to Draw, and joining me today is Night Eye, or we'll just call him Tino. Introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Tino. I'm from Zimbabwe, and I'm 20 years old. Uh, you're Neb 20. City. Yes, you're Neb 20. City. You look. You sound like you sound like you're like 15. I've met some 15 year olds with uh, that deep of a voice. Nebs, it's your turn to introduce yourself. <laughs> I am. Oh, okay. Also, yeah. hi. I'm Chris Hansen. Yes, that he is. He hunts Peter. <laughs> uh, and Wolf. Introduce yourself. Po potato wolf. wolf. I'm the awkward. Potato. Oh shit! I didn't really talk much the last time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, today's topic is going to be about influences. All of us here are, cre are creators to a certain extent. Uh, most of us in here are. Fan fictions. Most of us in here are writers, but I am both a writer and an artist. So we're going to be talking about our influences in the mediums that we work in. So who wants to who wants to go first and talk about their influences? Or shall I go first? Paul Dini. Paul Dini. Yeah. Uh, how so? Dialogue wise, what what influences is what? Part All of wise. The fuck have you have you have you seen Heart of Ice? No, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, so Paul Dini. He's known for, before 1992, he was known for the Ewok show and Tiny that, Toon Adventures. That doesn't sound like something, I'm actually surprised that. But then, 1992 came. Ewoks. You know what came out in 1992, Tammy? You what know, you know what? I know Sonic that, 2 that, came out in 1992. No, fuck, no, not Sonic <laughs> 2. Fuck Sonic 2. Batman the Animated Series. <laughs> oh, okay, that makes more sense. That makes more sense. Paul okay. Dini was the story editor. He had written Heart of Ice, mm -hmm. Almost Got Him, Joker's Millions. Uh, the, the one with oh, the... You so worked on, it like, was, specific episodes. Baby Doll. All right, okay. Well, he also did Superman, the animated series, Batman Beyond, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a bit of Zeta Project and Static Shock. Oh, for a second there, I thought, a... when you said Batman Beyond for a second there, I thought Brave and the Bold and I got my wise. Fuck you! Like... He I did like write for that, though. Oh, he did. I like that show. But, uh, but anyway, he did good. write a couple episodes of uh, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited before leaving Warner Brothers and then... Doing a bit so of he, Batman he, he Arkham Knight Arkham on, Asylum. He basically worked on the DCAU. Not even just that, the comics. Oh, okay. That's interesting. And Clerks, the animated series, Clerks. You know, <clears throat> the one with the Kevin Smith. I do not know what that is. The, but, uh, the, the Jays and the Silent Bobs. I bet a lot of people are kind of like. <sighs> I, I'm feeling. So I'm showing how much of a fake comic fan I am right now because I don't even know who Paul Dini is. But that being said, I've never really been much of a DC person to begin with. Uh, I've always been a Marvel guy. So, you know There's what? also... Uh, 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 I kind of fit in on both sides of the coin. I go for both DC and Marvel. Can I finish? Please. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. Uh, there's yep. also a certain someone. His name was Dwayne. Was mm -hmm. Dwayne. His last name was a McDuffie. Johnson. No, fuck, no. <laughs> the All Rock right. didn't write Ben 10. <laughs> Can you imagine an episode of Ben 10 written by the Rock? <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Dwayne McDuffie. Justice League, Static Shock, you know, Justice League Unlimited. All right. Uh, ben 10. Justice All League right. Doom. That was pretty good, right? Anyone? Mm. I, you know, sadly, I'm, uh, I'm interested in watching all these shows, but I haven't actually watched any of them. 
Like the All only, Star uh, the, Superman. The only DC cartoons I've seen are Teen Titans and, uh, well, a few here, but oh, Batman: Brave and the Bold and Titans Go. Oh, and uh, when, I, when, sadly, I and, uh, uh, when I went and visited Tinoid Zimbabwe uh, three years ago, four years ago, we watched uh, Teen Titans versus Justice League, the animated yep, movie. I remember watching that one. Yep, we did. It's not yeah. written by Dwayne, sad. Although there is a reason why Dwayne doesn't write anymore. He's dead. Oh, that's unfortunate. Why are you talking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this this video is dedicated to Dwayne McDuffie. You have uh, turned when, this video to the most depressing thing. Uh, whatever anyway. year he was born in, to 2011. My turn, my turn. Okay, my first... Carl Bowlers, Russell T. Davies. Anyway. Oh, well, actually, do you want to go into Carl Bowlers a tiny bit? Uh, oh, Carl Bowlers. Uh, he was trying to break in as a writer in the 90s, and then he's most known for his Sonic stuff. Now he's an editor at Valiant. Is that actually true? Because I feel like at this point, more people probably know him for his Valiant stuff. It's just that none of us interact with it. That's why it feels like more people know him for his Sonic stuff. Uh, now he's an editor at Valiant. Uh, Russell T. Davies. Won, like awards and stuff. <laughs> Russell T. Davies wrote, wrote Queer, Queer as Folk and my favorite era of Doctor Who, as well as Alex's. Wolf, any thoughts on that? Hmm? I wasn't... What was the question? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wasn't paying attention. You wasn't paying attention. You weren't paying attention. I was saying that my influences were Paul Dini, Dwayne McDuffie, Russell T. Davies, and Carl Bowlers. Yeah. Wolf, nibs will flip if you don't pay attention, so please pay attention. <laughs> yeah, you gotta play... He's gonna yeah, scream, he's gonna he's scream and blow up all our eardrums again if you don't pay attention. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I guess Tido, do you want to go next uh, with your influences in writing? I know you're mm. a huge Naruto fan, uh, and I know you like do Naruto fan fictions on Wattpad and stuff. Do you do you still write those? Wait, what the fuck? Yeah, he's a writer. What Wattpad? Yeah, Wattpad. What goes on Wattpad anymore? My mom goes on Wattpad. No. <laughs> Depressing. <laughs> Don't bring your mom into this. <laughs> Don't well, bring I mean, your mother into this. My, my mom writes like Christian stories and stuff on Wattpad that, are, that are actually doing like okay. Like as religion. As, they're actually religious okay stories. As as, like uh, you know, rep. Like people actually read them from time to time, which R is a pain. Yeah. She even asked me to make a cover for her, which I did. I don't know. About I'll as, put that in the show notes. About as okay as those Christian uh, power ballads from the nineties. Uh, yeah, sure. Anyway, you were saying to know. Okay, wait. Can somebody hey. else go? Because. I'm still a bit new with this whole podcast thing, so I just want to get the gist of how it goes. Uh, okay, all right, all right. I'll go, I'll go. So I was going to ask you to go, Tammy. I'm going to go art first, because I have, like, a ridiculous number of influences, but I'll go art first. And the first art influence I have, I cannot do this podcast without mentioning him, Akira Toriyama. The God creator, damn it. The creator of Dragon Ball. Uh-huh. Like, okay, here's the thing. Shit. He's, not even, he's not even really, like, my first inspiration into, like, drawing spaz. humans. No, not Spaz. Spaz wasn't, God really, damn it. Spaz wasn't really an influence in my art until, like, way later on. Uh, and that's specifically with my Sonic art, because, frankly, I think the way Spaz draws humans, at least in anime style, is kind of weird, because it just looks like Western anime. And you never want to have that feel. It feels really weird and trash. But, um, but what if it's Code Lyoko? I don't know what the... Wait, what? You don't, you don't know what Code Lyoko is? Are you fucking okay? That's not, it sounds familiar, but I don't... I'm not sure. But anyway. Ah, yeah, fuck it. He was my biggest influence as far as manga styles go. Though nowadays, I, I'm going to be completely honest... Even though it's still like really cool to look at, especially if it's 
like emulated by animators like Yuya Takashi and Dragon Ball Super or like, you know, Shiro, is it Shiro Amano or whatever? No, that's Kingdom Hearts. Who? Shiro Amano is the Kingdom Hearts manga. But anyway, um, it looks really cool, but at the same time, it also kind of feels like one of the most base level, like at least face wise, it also feels like one of the most base level anime styles you could ever learn to draw in. That being said, it is like one of the most unique looking anime styles I've ever seen. Because there's not many anime that look like Dragon Ball. Like a lot of anime kind of bleed in together in a way. Um, like they'll still have, they'll have like minor differences that set them apart here and there. But I still feel like Dragon Ball's art style definitely blends in way less than like Wait any minute. other anime. Because, like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Toriyama, so Tammy, really cool stuff. Yeah, what's up? I just remembered something. You know about the one of the key one of the key animators for Dragon Ball Z was actually a guy. His name was Hisashi Eguchi. He directed. You're not gonna believe this. He directed the uh, I the Toei Sonic CD and opening. He directed the ending. And opening cutscenes for uh, a certain a video game for a certain Sega console. Sonic it's CD. it's it's Sonic City. Yeah, I follow the guy on Twitter, dude. <laughs> you do? Yeah, I didn't know he had a Twitter. He's actually the guy. He's actually the guy who's been saying, "Can you guys stop calling it Toei because it wasn't even animated by Toei or something like that?" It was. I, I can't. I can't remember the whole thing. I but, mean, it was produced by Toei. Oh, uh, maybe even, it's the way you're dressed. People don't even like, you know, call Toei Sonic, you know, Toei Sonic anymore, just because that one guy said that. I can't remember the actual. Oh, studio and they call him animated. Studio but, Junio. Um, yeah, Studio Junio, that one. So people call me Junio. Studio Junio actually, uh, you're not. Studio Junio actually helped. Uh, Emphasized the uh, the artwork for the Punch Out arcade game by Shigeru Miyamoto. Mm. The but, artwork yeah, was not um, the uh, not the game well, itself. I, guess I mentioned like Toriyama emulators, um, like specifically storyboard artists that like had to emulate Toriyama's art style for the anime. One of the ones I really like is Keisuke Musanaga. Um, it's not like it's weird because it doesn't even look exactly like Toriyama. It definitely, you can tell he's like putting his own influence to it, but it still looks really Ooh. cool. And I would say that it even looks better than the standard Toriyama art style. So, like, if I were to go for a Tor- Toriyama style, I'd probably look at Keisuke Musanaga for influence because his art style, he really fleshes out the Dragon Ball Z art style that I haven't seen before. But uh, anyway, I've been going on for a while now. Wolf, do you have any influences you want to talk about? We'll just keep uh, going round and round until it's time to wrap up. <laughs> uh, if you want to carry on while I, yeah, you know, think what I'm going to say because, you know, okay. I'm just off with the and I'm just. <laughs> Neb, do you have any? Do you have any other influences you want to go into? Or have you said them all? <laughs> I haven't. You know, you know, I've. I have a lot of them. Uh, okay. Musical influences, mostly Sonic ones. That's it. Mm-hmm. Maybe a bit of uh, Doctor Who. Russell's Doctor Who music, you know. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe a bit of, uh, you know, maybe a bit of uh, the Batman Tim Burton movie music. Maybe a bit of the Shirley do Walker. You, do you maybe by a any bit of, know who the composer of the Batman Tim Burton movie is? It was Danny Elfman, mm-hmm. Sp- you know, Spider Man, oh, and Justice League. From the Raimi movies. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I actually really all of them, them, all of them except three. Three was done by a guy named I think his name was Christopher Young. Mm-hmm. He, uh, Christopher Young, is um, was one of the. Composers for the American version of The Return of Godzilla, uh, Godzilla 1985. 
Uh oh. We sure as hell have pissed off some Godzilla Japanese purists uh, up in here. Uh, uh, hey, screw you. Godzilla 85 was a good movie. Is that the one where the guy goes, that's a lot of fish? No, 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 no. Fuck you. No. <laughs> that, that was David Arnold. His James uh, Bond score lot. was better. Wait. Is this the Godzilla movie where there's that giant hawk or those giant eagles? What was it? A giant hawk or eagle? Giant, giant hawks or eagles? Like, what the hell are you like, talking about? No, he said giant hawk or eagles. <laughs> Not R. Uh, I did I did say or. Oh, I thought you said R. I was going to be like, how can... Giant anyway. It's giant uh, monster. So eagles. anyway... Or is it the one that had the Hydra instead? The Godzilla, one Godzilla 1985 starred uh, 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 Perry Mason back at it again from the 1956 version of the original movie. Did this one have any other monsters besides Godzilla? I think that's no. basically what he's trying to ask. Okay. So no, it's not the one that you're asking about, uh, you know. Are you, yeah. are, you ta are you thinking about Mothra? Yeah, I was gonna say, are you thinking about Mothra? Because that's the only flying monster I know from the Godzilla. Or is it Ghidorah? It's like a giant moth monster thing. Or Ghidorah. I don't think he appeared in any of the later movies. He just appeared in like the early classics versions. No, he appeared in one of the 80s movies. 80s oh, and did? 90s. Oh, okay. I think he was... Uh, Wolf says that her Discord may have frozen, so I'm not sure if she's still with us. Yeah, she's still with now. us. Uh, oh, okay. It's uh, like a second. I was like, okay. uh, uh, so yeah, uh, Danny Elfman, Murray Gold, you know, Shirley mm. Walker, a bit of the, a lot of the Shirley Walker. And now I'm beginning to listen to that uh, Vangelis guy. He's he's Wait. a pretty good guy, a Wait, good of, music uh, man. You speaking know, Blade Runner. Uh, speaking of American composers, he's Greek. I mean, no, I mean like music made for Amer American versions. Um, you know, I'm not really someone who like does music, but I have considered doing like FO Studio and stuff like that before. I've actually been looking into getting an Alice's QS6 because of the soundboard. What the that fuck? Has. Those yes, are that... really hard. To find. It's a type of keyboard. And it has like various sounds, because if there were someone that I would be influenced by, uh, in terms of like making Yuzo backup, Koshiro, I forgot. It would be uh, Scott Morgan, Julius Dobosh, and uh, Mike Smith, and mm -hmm. these are the composers. These are the composers for the American soundtrack of Dra Dragon Ball Z, otherwise known as the Falconer soundtrack. Oh right. I don't I don't want to call it that because I actually want the other guys who got involved to get credit. So I'm going to call it the Cake Mix soundtrack because that's cake. the company they made it under. So the Cake, cake. Mix soundtrack, which is the better Ass. soundtrack. Fight me, Japanese purists. I don't care. Fight me, IRL. Let's wait. I I I don't know which I don't know which version I I prefer. The Nathan Johnson shits. The the fucking. Oh, the Nathan Shinsuke. Johnson stuff is like the stuff from the Ocean soundtrack. So I don't even know if anyone. Can... No, it's not. That is, is. No, that's for the Funimation movies. Oh, didn't he do music uh, for Ocean as well, though? No, that was uh, Shugi Levy, uh, Saban himself, and Ron Wasserman. Oh, okay, all right. Ron yeah. Wasserman, another big influence because I know, Power Rangers. I know. Nathan Johnson composed the original eye catch theme for Dragon Ball, but then they stopped using it for some goofier version that the Falconer team made. And I kind of prefer the Nathan. No, that Johnson was Ron. Movie. That was Ron Wasserman. Was it? Yeah. Ooh. Rock the, the Dragon. That's Ron Wasserman. No, not the intro. The eye catch. You know. The, what do you mean the eye catch? The, the eye catch they, was Nathan Johnson. The thing that they. Like the little piece of music that they play on the poster when it cuts to commercial. I know what an eye catch is, Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> that was Nathan Johnson. No, the fuck. No, the fuck. It wasn't. He's There's credited no on that. 
There's no fucking way. Shh, give me proof. He's credited on that. But proof! Anyway, uh, I will look oh for God. proof. Oh my God. While, uh, Tino, do you want to give any influences you have in your writing? Uh, uh, yeah. I guess I'll give it a shot. For me, my main... For me, when I do my works, I look at the main animation graphic, the main animation of the Naruto series, which was mm-hmm. written by Masashi Kishimoto. Yep, as that's we all him. know. Yep. Did he write the screenplay? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he was involved with the anime itself, no. He might Clearly be not. No. He might be directly involved with the Boruto anime, but I know he's not like fully writing the Boruto manga because he's too old now. So he's doing it with an assistant. So. How old? No, the animation was actually directed by Hayato Date. I said oh, screenplay, okay. not the fu- not he's the post- anime. I don't, I don't. Yeah, this. Yeah, the script. He can't do animation. <laughs> the script. Yeah, the script. That's the. Did the directors not do oh, the script? The script. <laughs> The script was actually, was written by two people. The first episode up to the 132nd was written by Katsuyuki <laughs> Sumisawa. Um, Hi, Jesus, sorry. looks like Megan jumped out the window this time. Uh, <laughs> okay. Megan. We'll, be sure to get, we'll be sure to get Neb's uh, recording you screaming and jumping through a window. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, <laughs> jump into action. But, but anyway, to know to know you were saying. Uh... So yes, from a from a reader's perspective, when I'm looking at the Naruto series, it's a captivating series with actually a very long mm. storyline. So what mm. people usually do on things like anime, on things like Wattpad or fanfiction.net, is they take the storyline and perhaps transform it into a version of what they wanted it to turn out like or how they feel the main character should have been like for example we all know in animations the main character is usually the stupid one who who somehow overcomes every obstacle but is always the stupid yeah ain't that some shit the the (laughs) number one knucklehead ninja exactly knucklehead i thought you were gonna say the god damn it (laughs) <laughs> I was gonna say number one knuckles. We no, always, know that not that. that. We always know that there's the knucklehead. Even then we worse. always know that the, then there's the rival, who's the mm-hmm. emo guy, who's always the emo, keeps to himself, <laughs> always oh, like... you know, sitting in the corner. Shadow the Hedgehog. Hey oh. Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> As you yes. start to does not example, always it's... need an emo character. It can be someone that's I know. Just I was emotional. making. I mean, I was not... making a joke, Megan. Don't no, worry. I know. Not someone I know. like Vegeta, who's kind of like the rival of Goku, but Vegeta isn't even that emo, to be fair. No, no, he's just he's a tough guy. No, he's Vegeta like a very just has, Vegeta angry has guy. a very big <laughs> superiority complex. That's the problem. Mm. Vegeta yeah. has it's a superiority complex. Thing. No matter how many times Goku actually surpasses him, he always feels like he has to topple Goku. So in a way, I feel like that makes him childish, even though he's not childish. We were, we were actually getting into this in the writing episode, where, like, one thing that really annoys me is that by the end of Dragon Ball Z, like, Vegeta kind of accepts that he can never beat Goku. And then in Dragon Ball Super... He's trying to beat Goku, so they kind of just like undid all of his character development. And I'm kind of yes, like, like these days, I'm still watching the Dragon Ball Z Super Series where they're in the tournament of power. I've, mm-hmm. re- I've recently mm-hmm. watched the episodes where Goku unlocks his hyper ultra instinct, ultra yeah, instinct, the ultra instinct, yes, the yeah. ultra instinct, master. And yet Vegeta still feels compelled to actually master such a thing. But the thing with Ultra Instinct is that it can only be tapped into because it's like fighting without thinking. One you know, <sighs> you want to know something really funny about that? In the no. manga, Master Roshi was actually able to tap into Ultra Instinct for a tiny bit. Uh-huh. But it's actually not as ridiculous as a lot of people think because Master Roshi is a seasoned 
technical martial artist while you know technically like vegeta definitely focuses on raw power and i think vegeta definitely puts more thought into how he fights i mean like i say yes. that but then he also like will fight people that are stronger than him and then get his ass kicked can i have some major of what, of what we're talking about oh we're, we're talking, talking about, about our influences no matter if you're a writer an artist a f- a fucking Unless music it man. It did we devolve kind of, into a Dragon Ball Z conversation, yes. Uh, so maybe um, you should go ahead, Megan. Oh, no, Tino, Tino, Tino wasn't okay. done yet. Tino wasn't done all right, yet. All right, all right. Finish off what you're oh. saying. My headphones are playing yeah. up. My okay, soul so hurts. I was saying, so I was saying when you're writing is something that is based off other things, you want to look at maybe if you're you're going to be looking at whether you're adding in new characters or whether you're just going mm-hmm. to be sticking with the characters that were in the animation plot or the series plot. Because you want to let your viewers know whether you're following the plot, whether you're going astray by a bit or... Like, for example, in Naruto, for example, instead of having a goofy, stupid Naruto, you could, for example, have one that is smarter, that is more disciplined, but maybe not overpowered. Just to keep the story Mm. interesting, he goes up at an interesting rate rather than shooting all the way to the top. So I feel like stories really bring out the imagination of what people want to see in animation and movies. If, like, you watch an animation, you watch a movie, you watch a series, then you just think whilst you're sitting at the table. Those thoughts that you always have when you're thinking about an episode that you've watched, how it could have turned out, I wanted it to turn Mm. out like this, I wanted it to turn out like that. It becomes... An idea. A story. It becomes a story. The more you add it on bit by bit, it becomes a story. You piece it together and it becomes a story. So, like, so I, think I, that's... I guess I have, like, one question. Like, which part, like, which era specifically of Masashi Kishimoto do you like? Because he has, like, because I think the priorities kind of changed a little bit once we, like, got into Shippuden a tiny bit, especially when we started <laughs> going towards the end of the show. Like, I, I, a lot of people who are, like, hardcore Naruto fans will probably even argue that Masashi Kishimoto kind of lost the plot a tiny bit. Like, which era specifically? Will, like, early or late? I will actually I, I will actually tell you that I prefer the Shippuden series compared to the original Naruto. Because Oof. I feel like the... Because I feel like the original Naruto, they... Ouch. They were just building up for Shippuden. That was all they were doing. There wasn't really much of a story... They, I mean, there was story, mm. but I feel like they were just building it up for Shippuden. And as yeah. a result, the number of episodes that were in the original Naruto were unnecessary. Oh, but then it, well, you have, to, it, you have to remember that a lot of the episodes towards the end of Naruto were actually, okay. like, I think some, I read somewhere that, because I didn't watch all of the original Naruto, I did skip to Shippuden eventually. Yeah. You're saying something. Uh, you can actually like after after the chase you can just go straight to you know Shippuden but uh anyway yeah after like Sasuke's departure or something from the village oh my god yeah what is it now so anyway so anyways yeah Mm. I think that's just it when it comes to reading and writing fan fiction items you want mm-hmm. to, you because that's generally it. That is fan fiction, and <sighs> you are basing it off something else and mm. turning it into a alternate reality. I guess that's what Nebs, you can call on. it. <laughs> what are you doing, Naps? I think that is where I think that is where saying that Tina has been going on for a while. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I've been dragging on for a while. Why doesn't the next person go? I'm actually it's been 84 years. 
How long have we, have you guys been recording? If anyone knows, I don't. Know. I don't I fucking think, know. I don't it's, think it's been that long. I zoned out for a lot of that conversation. It I can't. Can't. Oh, don't worry. I can relate. I zone out pretty easily. I do it not. It can't watch have been no, any sorry. longer than like thirty minutes. But anyway. Oh, um, okay. Uh, Megan, you go. What are your influences? Uh, no matter if it's uh, writing uh, like, or drawing what, or what, music. What, so what, inf- what are the things that influence me? Like, like yeah, real quick. We're we're basically what we're doing is we're going one by one, and we're like going round and round. Like that's kind of how we're doing it. Okay. You're you're uh, a little bit crackly, uh, Tammy. Um, then if you yeah, uh, I noticed yeah, that as well. Yes. Uh, I'm just. I guess I need something specific so I can like answer it. Like what? What I find that influences me, like art or music or just any like art music. It could like, be. It could be like... anything. Okay. Uh. So like artwork that inspires me. Mm-hmm. Go cool. well, like, ahead. No. Specifically, what influence? Like, what do you look at and incorporate? Like, try to incorporate into your work. Like, what sort of uh, helps you develop your style? I. I guess when it comes to influence, music, I think, is such an important thing in my life. And I feel like what really, like, influenced me the most in life uh, when it came to music, because it was hard for me as a kid to get into mainstream music, and I tried to. That's but totally I just beautiful. And I... And I just couldn't, I guess I just couldn't find the right music to get into. Like, I thought I did, but then it just, I guess I just could I guess I saw Neb, like, Neb, I what is with that background thing? Neb, 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 what are you doing? Neb. I thought my cat was here again. Well, get your cat out of the way, because you don't want it to be too distracting in the background, okay? Um, no, I thought can... he was. All right, all right. Just as long as your cat ain't making too much racket, you can still have him around. Mm. Yeah. Or, or her, I'm not sure. But anyway, you were, uh, you were saying, Megan. Uh, but I guess it's sort of like when, when it did happen, but like when I found that music, because like before it was like video game music that mm-hmm. only connected me, Sonic music, that was that was totally. one of my thing. And then Vocaloid came into my life. No. And it, oh! What do you mean, no? Vo- I uh. am, Oh! Like I discovered Vocaloid music and it just it changed me. I was like, yes, this is the only music I will forever listen to. Well, it wasn't that music, but it was also that and techno music, and that was like a big thing in senior school because that's all I listened to. I, I, I can kind of relate now that I really think about it because sometimes you know, if you like listen to a soundtrack from a movie or a game or anything. Helps you picture certain scenarios yeah. mm-hmm. in your mind. That is a, like, yeah. Music helped very me. True. Music because... helped me so much to create scenes and scenarios. So a lot of inspiration from, I guess, most of my stories come from the music I listen to. I yeah. have, I have so many playlists. Well, not so many, but I have a lot of music on Spotify I listen to. I have so many playlists of so many different artists and. Genres, crush 40, like, crush 40. Not, well, not just Crush Forty. I, I, if you Yuzo Koshiro, I, I don't know where I really put like my influence. I mean, I've been starting. I've been list. I guess I could say like my favorite soundtrack or like my favorite album as of now. I need to look it up because I keep forgetting the, 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 the out the, the. I guess the artist. The two artists. Mm-hmm. I. Oh yeah, it's right here. Uh, it's Sibio Moto. Uh, I think what? The, the ja- I think the Japanese. I've, I'm not sure. It sounds Japanese. They, I think that they are Japanese, but their music is in English. Mm. And my favorite album from theirs is uh, Stereotype oh. A, and it's like a no, very Stereotype A. Um... But it's really good. Like <laughs> it's like the music. I've like it was less like yes, this is just perfect this music i just feel so strongly connected to this music i feel like this represents me as a person i just love how it sounds it's just it's just beautiful and i feel like my yeah. favorite ones from it are is flower and actually there's um because if there's one music moon, like the flower and moon are my favorites on the album there's um 
Kiro Yuki Sawano, who he's composed who? like he's composed music for various animes. He's comp- composed music for Attack on Titan. Uh, uh, now I know I why that's familiar. Some music for Promare, I think. Prom. But he. Prom. <laughs> but um. Yeah, it's. He's got really good music, not even just like anime music, but actual lyrical music. Like he has this very distinct sound in his music. And it's like, I think it's very good, especially for helping me picture like emotional scenes, not so much action scenes. So like, you know, tell me- I don't know, like when you, when you guys have the time, you guys should definitely look that guy up because his music okay. is freaking you know who you, you know who you should really look up though? You ever heard of this uh, guy named Duh? Yeah. Damn it! Wait, I think Tilda wants to say something real quick. Okay, wait. Okay, wait, let Nib speak. I realized I was interrupting. Let Nib speak. Okay, Nib, you, you ever heard of, uh... You ever I mean, heard all, of, all uh... Of us, all of us fucking... technically cut Megan, so... But anyway, you go there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you ever heard of, uh, Vangelis? No. You ever, uh, you ever heard of, uh, uh, his music for, uh, some 80s movie i don't know i don't know if you heard of it it's called uh uh blade runner blade, blade I have runner not actually watched that but i want I've, to i haven't watched blade runner no it's pretty good the yeah. the, the sure music very very you know what i think we should do? no please you know what i think we talk should talk about do? our favorite Tenta. movies what's that tina now, I was thinking maybe, since we're talking about how music actually brings out that inner imagination or how it actually brings out scenarios for series and mangas, maybe we could actually or add comics. a bot, yeah, or comics, we could actually add a bot for Octave, where we actually showcase the different songs that we're each interested in, to actually, you know, the different up the surface. Like, sorry, repeat that one more time. Like uh, add a bot us, to the octave bot. Oh, octave bot. Okay. Yes. That, it's a bot that's that's mainly... to add. Uh, I can send. Va- I'll send you the link for the bot, Tommy. Okay. I think that Vangelis guy I was talking about. He's known for doing this music called Chariots of Fire. Mm. Sounds familiar. It's, it's got a yeah. piano you and 80 synths. Uh, you can link it to me in DMs, Timo. Could I just... Uh, you know what? Okay. I'm going to open up my Spotify and I'm just going to go through all of the uh, artists I follow. Um, uh, how right. long is that list? <laughs> a very long uh, list, but I'll pick out my faves. Um, okay. Uh, so we have... Uh, we have... Okay, so I, when you get to know about me, uh, I my mix of like stuff is very like it's like between the 90s and like early 2000s music and it's like not most of the time it's like mainstream stuff it's like semi mainstream stuff because I love Europop and like techno Europe music which I adore and I guess to name a few one of my favorite like electronic artists uh, is uh, Gigi Astonio I uh, I think that's how you pronounce Whoa. his name. It's Italian. Fu- that guy, it's actually Gigi, and that guy Gigi. always comes up every time I try to find Gigi D for um, you know the uh, yes, the artist yeah, who created yeah, the murder of me. Mm-hmm. Every yeah. time I try to look for Gigi D or David Art, like, it comes up with with that guy. Yeah, yeah. His stuff is very. I recommend listening to his stuff. Uh, Gigi, Did he do he that is a very caramel dancing song or something. No, 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 no. That's that's caramel. That's just caramel dancing that originated from the album from the actual band from Sweden named Caramel, and they've uh, only made right. stuff since the nineties. And then the spin-off Ooh, band uh, is Caramel Dancing, and they're still going. I, I think there's, I, there's a whole history of the caramel stuff. And I didn't want to listen <laughs> to the entire biography. Okay. Okay. Let me just let me let me finish. Let me finish. But with Gigi, I recommend listening to stuff like uh, the Riddle. 
uh, blah blah blah. Uh, try to wait. The song, the song is actually called blah blah blah. Yes, it's a song called blah blah blah, but it's really catchy. Nah, blah, I blah, know blah. it has. It's not like has a lot of lyrics, but it's just blah a, blah blah blah. It's, <laughs> it's a very yeah. bouncy song. Like, hold on. I know a bunch of songs it's that just, don't like, have any just, lyrics. It's very, it's very jumpy. Oh, I love Lemon Demon. Lemon Demon's music. I know good. a bunch of songs that don't have any lyrics and just oh, have uh, one, just have me, a bunch me, of guys singing, like, chanting one me, word. Oh Batman. my goodness. So, sorry, I was just looking for uh, Mealy, Miracle Musical, or Tally Hall. Machine Girl. Machine Girl is such an influence <sighs> on me. Oh my God. Machine Girl's da, 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 music da, 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 da. is very experimental. It might not be for everyone because it's very like it's very like yeah. loud and very aggressive. But I recommend the Gemini uh, album because it's a little more calmer and tame. But it's very like fast paced. It's very like I re- mm. I describe that music as like oh, Y two K music. It's very Y two K. It feels like you're running through inside of a Dreamcast at top speeds like Sonic and. It's just you mean like, like that advert where they're literally hanging out inside a Dreamcast and having a party inside? Yeah, and it's just it's just very techno. Just look up look up Machine Tammy. Girl look up Machine Girl Gemini on YouTube yeah. or on like Tammy. his channel. And, oh mm-hmm. by the way, Machine Girl is a Sonic fan, believe it or not. He, I think it is a guy. It's just I think there, it's- there is Tammy. one fan. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh- it's not just one advert. It's a whole ad campaign with 30 different ads. I've seen a commercial where a bunch of uh, football players are in the well, fucking I was talking pub with Rayman. I was talking specifically about the man stay off the light speed ad. Yeah, tell me idea. Um, and, then we're, and then one where Corey right. brings is like, Ryan, you're going to get roofed and fucking... But um, uh, what was I gonna say? There is one band that I know of. I don't even know if they like still make music now. Uh, they're called Master Plan. What? Is, what? Are, that sounds familiar. Who the hell? Master, Master Plan. Master Plan sounds really cool though. So here's who the hell leads it? Eggman. Here's an, interesting, here's an interesting story of how I discovered this band. Um, Carmen and Ventino. Oh, yeah, it's actually did. It's actually big. Yeah, but um, yeah. here's how. Here's an interesting story. If I I uh, discovered this this band, uh, basically I used to like play on my mom's phone at the time when I was a kid. Yada yada yada, and there was this <laughs> one ad for a fan game called Sonic Rebirth. Sonic. Oh and I, my yeah. god! And Sonic Rebirth. I've never heard of it. It's kind of like this retelling of Sonic One, but it has modern Sonic with classic eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so it's basically just Sonic Genesis, uh, the comic. I mean, to be honest, it looks like a good game. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't played it. But anyway, um, they have this song called Spirit Never Die. Uh, I used to call it Never Give Up, Never Give In, because I never actually knew the... But it's called Spirit Never Die. And they, they also make they also make some pretty cool music that's uh, uh info. We'll look them up now. Rick Astley. <laughs> the song, the songs uh, I recommend so from Master, Master Plan. Are, Plan. Okay. The songs I recommend from them are Spirit Never Die, Heroes, uh, Sonic Heroes, Step Into the Light, and mm-hmm. oh, there's one more, but uh, yeah. It's Those called Get Your Head in the Game featuring Zach like, Efron. Those three songs in particular sound like book chapter oh, titles, God. Heroes, Step Into the Light, and Spirit Never Die. And I actually want to, at some point, use those song na- names as chapter titles, as like writing prompts. But uh, yeah. Anyway, I guess, well, actually, Wolf, have you said an influence yet? I think Wolf is the only one who hasn't said an influence yet. Yeah, I've been pretty silent this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry if like I can't. Oh, there we go. I found the artist, uh, Master Plan. So, uh, so Wolf, what what are your influences? I think this is them. Yeah, to actually, see Lips initiating something is a shock for me. <laughs> the fuck are I you talking about? Finding it on Spotify. Yeah, no, like the only, it's like the only reason you're here is to shoot people down, not to, you know, initiate anything. 
<laughs> Turning <laughs> Wolf, what are your influences? Yeah, Wolf, what are your influences? Uh, I'm interested. Well, I don't really have as many as you guys because writing is the only thing I'm actually good at. Aww. <laughs> yeah. Ah, I think out of everyone here so far, I think out of everyone here so far, I have had the worst presentation of an influence. So I think you'll do better actually, than me. So the, the funny thing is, Tido, you Come on, Wolf. Your yeah, do a writing influence. This is going to sound kind of mean now that I think about it, but your explanation was actually far more intricately put than I expected it to be, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like, so I wasn't more complex. Yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be Too as, complex. Well, as well put <laughs> as it was. So, <laughs> take that out. Um, so. But, uh, like I yeah, said, this is my first time doing anything of this sort, so you'll have to excuse me for my inexperiences. Is no, fine. No, it's fine. It's fine. So, anyway, Wolf, what are your influences? I'm kind of curious and interested. Uh... I really want to know if there's any writers that influence how you write, write dialogue in particular, because I really like how you. So, Cochrane, what would you say? Uh, I was saying I'm really curious about if you have any writers that influence how you write dialogue, because I really like how you write dialogue in particular. Well, to be fair, um, I don't. Um, well, I mean, you guys know that I'm not really a comic writer. Like the first. Yeah. The first comic I ever actually wrote was the audition for Sonic Saturn. That's the first thing I ever did. I never even considered mm-hmm. it before then, so I don't have any influences from comics at all. But just uh, like well, life- well, TV, uh, TV, movies, you know. Bit, uh, Chapter like books. What was, like, what, like, what was a show or movie that influenced... A influenced book, even. You, or yeah, a book. I- Normally, yeah, so much that it makes you motivated to create. Yeah. Fantasy novels, anything sci-fi, mythical. Cool. Like Tolkien, I guess. J.K. Rowling, Tolkien, <gasps> George Orwell. Oh, that's <laughs> definitely gonna it's... set a few I mean... fires up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like um. J.K. Like, Rowling. Um, I don't. I, I usually write longer novels. Well, I don't. I don't tend to write. Ugh, I can't really word it. I don't know how to word it. But... It's all right. It's all right. Take it's your time. time. It's <laughs> fine. Come on now. Wolf, I would imagine that, like, since you're really into Doctor Who as well, you might be similar uh... to Nebs, where you're somewhat influenced by that too. Is that fair to say? Kind of. Yes. Like Russell's era. Example, I'm. I am writing a Doctor Who fan fiction. I do not Ooh. recommend. Ooh. You should. You should tell my boyfriend. He might be interested. Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say we have a friend of the show, Alex Hedgefox, who's kind of doing like a Sonic meets Doctor Who crossover. Well, kind it's, of it's, yeah, it's, it's called doing. Sonic Star Adventures, and it stars the Doctor who turns into a movie and has like Don't please. Sir, please. and the Doctor. Wait. That's what. Wait, is that supposed to be private? <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I actually don't know. I actually don't know. So oh. then why are you screaming in our ears, damn it? Yeah, shut the fuck! Know, if you don't know, if it's a post- Shut the fuck! Shut up! No, shut the fuck! Shut the fuck! Shut up! Oh my god, my turn just is happening. Yeah, also... Oh, feel sorry. like it needs to be cut out, then we should probably censor that. But anyway, uh, well, he will, might, give really, a f- might be. He is going to be on episode ten. Also, I should probably bring up my leg is doing fine. It's on a cast. It's for anyone who came in episode two. You know, I was at uh, the hospital previously, but now I'm here. Uh, yay! At home um, with my cast. In a few days' time, we'll get a new one. Single. I'm going to have my purple cast, like my final Aww. cast. Yeah, and then I'll have like a cool like shoe to go with it, so I can walk around without having to worry about constantly using crutches. Shut up! Yeah. <laughs> but I guess going back to so my influence. Right because... Oh, sorry. What? Huh? Wait, what? Huh? Megan, Megan, uh, I think it would probably be uh, Nebs next because we're doing one one. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Sure. Uh, your turn, Neps, and then hopefully. Uh, uh, I kind of said all my writing influences and music influences. I haven't really done any movies in a while. 
All right. But what, um, what, about, what about the Russos? The Russos? What do you mean? What about the Russos? The Avengers. Oh. I know what, what you're oh. talking about. I'm what? The oh, Russos. Those are pretty good movies. What about those are pretty about, good movies? What about Joss Whedon? Fuck no. <laughs> I mean, not after uh, not after not after what happened with Justice League. At least I kind of like wait, those Avengers wait, movies. Nebs, are you actually Nebs? Are you looking forward to the Schneider mm-hmm. cut? I don't care about okay. Justice League. You don't. So I care like about Marvel animated Marvel Justice Marvel. League. I I care about. Animated Justice League more. Uh, uh, so right. basically, so basically, I'm not a Snyder man. I'm a McDuffie man. All right. Hey. So anyway, I guess we're going to you know again, and then we'll come back to me, and then we'll go to Wolf and Megan, and so forth and so on. E. Uh, All right. Yes. All right. So if we're going back to me, I just want to speak about something that brought me back into animations. Uh, oh boy. And- because I know that for a while I stepped out of animations after I finished watching things like oh, Naruto I and the like. Guys, I, feel, I feel like I should probably specify that when Tino says animations, he is talking specifically about anime. Uh, not like, he's not including like stuff like that, man. Or, yeah, he's talking specifically about anime, not cartoons. There's a Batman like, anime. I, yeah. <laughs> So I, I feel like I need to specify that just in case people are not sure about that. But anyway, you were saying to it's me, Akira. <laughs> it's Akira. So yeah, no. I was saying after I, after going through things like Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, and things like that, I kind of fell out of animation for a little bit. But the things that actually brought me back into animation were things like Sword Art Online, My Hero Academia. I feel like my hero yeah, academia is especially is what put me back into animation. So yeah, I just wanted what to hear your input like on, the on, what you guys, on what you guys thought about my hero academia. And I mean, especially you, Nibs, you criticized Sword Art Online, so what do you think about my hero academia? <laughs> I actually think My Hero Academia is better than Sword Art Online, but that's just. I me. haven't seen My Hero My Hero Academia. I'm I've just wondering why first... you didn't. Uh, I'm just wondering why you didn't really uh, space out Dragon Ball Z and Naruto. You just like Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, you know? Oh, it's like no, I was as like a comma. I... Yeah, a comma. where's the comma? It's a list. You, you, he, he doesn't have to say comma out loud, Ned. Come on. <laughs> Nibs. I, I know was, that. I was, uh, I was, maybe it's your voice. Nibs. What? Nibs. I was just what? stating that Naruto, Dragon Ball Z, and Pokemon were things that got I know. me into animation, but then when I, I finished I know, those, but, uh, I kind anyway, of fell out. A, so I was any, just okay. cruising through uh, them so I could get straight right. to the point. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, I haven't seen My Hero Academia. Actually, haven't watched the anime. I've only read the manga, and uh, I like it. But the thing with My Hero Academia, the manga, is that there's it's kind of hard to follow. You like it? In Tim certain, Curry was the best part. In certain instances, there's just way too much going on. Like way too much. Uh, yeah, like a Grant Morrison novel. To, <laughs> I don't know who that is, but that was just a funny joke. It might no, but that's it. the thing about manga. Manga, manga. when they're animating mangas, they kind of cut off some scenes from the manga so that they can fit in yeah. the, the animation into the exact like 25 <laughs> episodes that they're trying to meet. For example, with My Hero Academia, each season is 25 episodes. So when they're trying to fit in the season, they have to cut off some of the manga clips from the mm. pages or whatever. So with yeah. My Hero Academia, I feel like it's more of a modern animation. The graphics are actually quite good. And then there's the fact graphics. that it's actually... Graphics? Visual. Oh, graphics. Yeah, graphics. V- visuals. Graphics the visuals. from video games. So, yes. this is so you graphics. mean visuals. Sorry. Don't worry, it's okay. And, yes, I apologize. The visuals. Ah, it's all right. Don't worry. So the visuals for the... Graphics. It's actually quite good. Then I feel that... Hey, nibs. 
then I feel like the storyline is actually quite good. You're like just following a kid who's been born yeah. without mm. a power in a world full of people who are who have supernatural abilities. Who go that's to sky heaven. high. If there's well, actually the funny thing is a lot of people have made that comparison. That's the funny thing. That's a lot fucking of fucking people... sky high. A lot of people have compared My Hero Academia to Sky High. People actually say that My Hero Academia is just straight up the manga version of that. <laughs> I've never seen if that. If Kurt movie. Russell makes a cameo in the anime the English maybe, dub, I'm going to be super happy. Maybe uh, we, maybe. Well, I guess we just one of these days someone needs to ask the creator in the interview, being like, "Did did the Sky High?" made any influences and he'd be like what's sky high i've never heard of that movie before this guy, this guy <laughs> definitely knows about western material because if you read yeah, the manga, I guess. you see like spider-man like it's yes. not like it's not like okay. an actual like it's kind of like a silhouette of spider-man hmm. All you right. see him there a silhouette of spider-man i guess, I, I guess so, like, maybe I... Guy, the fact Sorry. that it's about heroes and stuff this guy is pretty clearly into like marvel and dc and stuff like that mm-hmm I don't know. Uh, I, I just, I just feel like he might. So <laughs> let Megan I just, speak, Tammy. I just feel like Sky High might be a kind of popular, but I don't know if it's popular enough for most people outside of like English-speaking countries to recognize Sky High in any way. Just. He might he might he might know Sky High's existence. He might be he might really have. dedicated to knowing. I mean, you have, to, you have to remember that sometimes when movies get sent abroad, they do dub over the movies. Yeah, or give or add subtitles hey, here's an, to it. Hey, here's they, an they idea. Did, yeah, they did that with Star Wars. They did. Mm-hmm. They, they have like a. You guys should see the German version of Star Wars because the voice acting in that is actually oh. really really good. Oh. Like, oh come on! I've, I I can't see the German the Star Wars. I've only seen the Turkish know, one, right? except for I the part where Vader says nine. Turkish. <laughs> but anyway, you were saying to know we cut you off when you were talking about My Hero Academia. So uh, yeah, I think things like My Hero Academia. Then the other one I think that that's actually quite good is Seven Deadly Sins. I don't know if any of you have watched that one instead. It's on Netflix, so I might have a look at it. Actually, hey, here's it. an idea, guys. What if the creator just flew to, flew to the United States one day, walked to a Walmart, happened to catch a fucking sky high at one of those uh, dollar dollar bins and shit? He would probably and right after like, watching oh, the movie, well, he got inspired and flew back to Japan and wrote a fucking <laughs> manga. <laughs> oh, I thought we were gonna say like while he was making My Hero Academia, what if he came over here and then he'd be like, "Well, My Hero Academia is totally pointless now because this already exists." And then he's just like, "Guys, I'm canceling My Hero Academia. It's no longer happening." No, <laughs> ain't that <laughs> some bullshit? Happened. I don't know. I I don't. I I, feel, I kind of feel bad for the creator. He's been through so much shit. Especially mm. some really he? toxic fans on Twitter. Yeah, like people harassed him on his like birthday and stuff for like dumb what? reasons. Like, That's some bullshit. They, I don't know what My they did. Hero but, Academia but, really does have the most toxic fans, and I'm gonna be honest. Uh, it's been said that there's a general rule: if you want to know which My Hero Academia fans are bad, just look at the ones that say My Hero Academia or Boku no Hero Academia. The ones who say Boku are probably the bad ones. <laughs> Bo- Bo- Boku, right. Right. Yeah, they probably fucking wank to Boku no Pico. Oh, no, God, no. no, don't, don't. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> I've actually seen that. Oh, God, um, you have! You unfortunate yeah. soul. <laughs> um, so. Thank God I haven't seen Boku no Pico. Anyway, Tido, you Anyways. were saying about seven deadly sins. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> No, I think that basically just covers it. Those just brought me back into animation, especially since mm. these are new series that are still ongoing. I feel like I shouldn't get into Sword Art Online today because Nibs, we're going to have this discussion on another cast. We are going yeah, to have this discussion uh-huh. on Sword Art Online debate. Yes. Hopefully we can get Digibro in here. No, Hello? let's get Alex Hedgefox. Let's get his opinion. He's an SAO expert, I think. Yeah, he, he might is. know. He actually really likes SAO. Yeah, I'm and I'm not going to fucking like too. Sword Art Online. I don't know. I don't I'm want... Just gonna oh, be we are not talking about this today, guys. I'm... We are not talking about this today. Not today. I, 
I know. <laughs> okay, I, okay. I don't know if I'll be on that episode yeah. or I'll just be there just for the sake of just pretending to know what's going on, but not really. I so. Actually, I've only read the Ironcrad manga. I do not know anything about Sword Art Online. After watching, I just, all, those, I mean, after like, watching the all the reviews cool. of it, I kind of just avoided it. Cause... Yeah, I, I avoided it too. But That's the thing with people. You know me, I, I base animation based on its visual and on its storyline. I don't base mm. it on other people's opinions because yeah. people's opinions can be biased. People will exactly. tell you, go watch an animation. Yet it's actually a very good one. Wait, wait, Tina, I have a question. Uh, yes, shoot. What did you think of the fairy dance arc? The fuck? The fairy. Yes, the fairy dance. The fairy dance. The one where Asuna was captured and then Kirito had to go. Yeah, that was actually a very good arc. The, the one but where it sounds like a fucking Dingo Pictures movie. Wasn't right? that like a really? Con- was it that controversial? It's really controversial because there's a scene where Asuna just straight up get. She gets molested by the villain and also gets. Oh my by god. Him. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's what very the hell funny. happened? <laughs> what the hell happened? Did Dingo Pictures team up with Sam Raimi? <laughs> and you know what's, you know what's really funny about that? Ricky <laughs> Kawahara, Ricky Kawahara, he's the creator and writer of Sword Online. Mm-hmm. Like, he's put so many of those kinds of scenes in the show to the point where, like, a few months ago, probably even last year, he actually had to, like, because obviously, I guess he's probably matured since he wrote these stories. He actually had to like apologize and be like to the voice actress, "Is like, hey, um, I wrote this scene in the light novel. I wrote it like years ago, and they're only just now adapting it. So I hope you forgive me for this." Like he actually had to apologize for that because what the fuck? Because it that sounds like one race. Sounds like something no, out of an Evil Dead thing, movie. Like, because yeah. that's the thing about Sword Art Online. There are many scenes like this that are quite graphic, Uncle, that can yeah. be quite, uh, uh, you know, too much for people who are the underage. You know, yeah. so and this is why I act- fucking hate Sword Art Online. But it sucks. If, to be honest, no. though, if you can't if you can't handle that, then you probably can't handle like Goblin Slayer. You know, exactly. what the fuck is Goblin Slayer? You don't know what Goblin Slayer is? So that is it very controversial. So that does the Green the Goblin and, and the Hobbit. No, the no. Green Nibs. Nibs. I, 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 have, I have the feeling that Nibs, the only animations he watches are Marvel and DC based animations. And maybe Sonic animations. Fuck you, I watch no. Saint Seiya. <laughs> well, Saint Nibs, isn't, Nibs isn't like a big weeb. No, like, he's, he's a lot of anime. He's Fuck very... you, I watch Saint Seiya. Yeah, but that's like old as hell. <laughs> he's more of the shonen type of person. He's kind of in that pool. Yeah, yeah. Right. And maybe a bit. If you want of... a very good, dis- if you want an example of very graphic animations with with there's a lot of bloodshed and graphic scenes and stuff like that, Attack on Titans is actually a very good place to start. Oh goodness! Oh, you know, the Attack that... on Titan was the thing that got me back, like into anime, anime, like because it was just—it uh, was the thing that got me really about... into anime. I'm gonna be completely what about... guys. Attack on Titan. You know, the funny thing is, if we want to talk about influences for a second, since that is the talk uh-huh. we're doing, Attack on Titan yeah, but... is actually one of the mangas that influences me to a certain extent. The only problem is, I don't. I have to be careful not to let it influence me too much. Because Attack on Titan, after a certain point, just becomes all talking and all traveling and, like, very little action. Like, especially if you're reading the manga and not watching the anime, it becomes really, really slow after, like, the first arc. Uh... And it's unbearable. Oh, my God. And then after the time skip, after the time skip, almost nothing actually happens until... Well, actually, I'm not going to spoil it because... Well, the manga is almost finished, and I just want to say, like... How my arm. I mean, the thing is, when I say Attack on Titan influenced me, what I mean is I straight up ripped off, like, a tiny bit of its story and incorporated it into mine. Uh... I'm, not say which <laughs> I'm not gonna say which part specifically, because it would kind of spoil copyrights, my... Copyrights, bro, copyrights. Sex! No, not sex. No, but there it's is so... Hentai! 
<laughs> no, no nabs. Uh, uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be on the edgy level, not the hentai level. So no. Oh, anyway. it's gonna be on the so mostly cultured level. No, no, no. It's like uh, it's not. No, that's not the thing that's from Attack on Titan. That's I'm talking about, but it's. Well, I guess I can mention it here because. Oh come on. I've seen Bloodshed before. I watched the fucking Blade Runner. Probably won't get that many views. I don't know. Um, but um, basically, there's an arc with er- with uh, uh, Reiner and Berthold. That's all I'm really going to say about that. If anyone's an Attack on Titan fan, they know what I'm talking about. But, that's their name? Yeah, the color... Well, is it even really spoilers? They were really don't spoil the it. Tell me they were- I haven't it. seen it. I don't want to see it closest it thing i've ever crazy. seen it was the fucking intro that was pretty good but you want to know what's Nibs. really weird about that the fact I that, know that like mike mcfarlane was the adr director they were gonna make a japanese live action movie at some point and that got canceled Wait, what? which one Attack on Attack Titan. On Titan. Oh, I thought it already came out. I thought there was Attack Did on Titan. Did it come out? Because I yeah. haven't seen it anywhere. No, so. it came out. And it, I heard bad things about it. A lot of people didn't like it. They didn't even have I mean, Levi. They didn't so even have Levi in the movie because Levi's. Japanese people having trouble pronouncing, I guess, the uh, pronouncing Levi. name Levi. because of it being you know, not Japanese because I think you know the names are European and it's like set in... Like Germany, well, it's almost like German. Well, it's not yeah. in, Germany, in Germany, but it's, like it's just heavily inspired, inspired by, by German and like very European stuff. Same oh, with God. like Full Metal Alchemist. Doing, like that's one European thing we definitely thing. don't want to get too deep into because Attack on Titan is actually very heavily criticized for being pro-Nazi. So, <gasps> oh no, I heard um, about that. Yeah, but anyway, that's like one slight influence I have in my work. Uh, 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 Doggo wants to finish. Alright, Wolf. It's your turn. Wolf? Oh, right, okay. <laughs> uh, what were you gonna say? It's okay, Wolf. It's funny you know. considering... Yeah. No, I'm just gonna carry on for while I'm sitting Sh- before. Shut the fuck up. I don't... <laughs> Nebs. <laughs> <laughs> Nebs, I just wanna say, you just made it so... so that we cannot get any revenue from this, ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> unless you make a Patreon. Yeah, unless we make a Patreon. Uh, so I'm anyway, actually... we'll, uh, go on. Yeah, uh, go on. Okay, just to say, like, if I do, like, trail off and start bubbling, I'm, I'm really sorry. Cause it's I... fine. It's fine. It's fine. fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's Come fine. on. Go on to say what you need to say here. I feel like I've already been doing that myself, so... <laughs> I, have I feel like that's happened on my items a lot more than anyone else's. <laughs> let, let her finish. Yeah, anyway, let her finish. finish. Let her finish. Yeah. yeah, I do get really anxious when I speak like this. I mean, even this is really hard for me to do. I do have massive... It's fine. Problems. Don't worry. Come on. Uh, what the hell what was you again? What were you gonna say? You were like, "Am I alright to finish in a sec, Uh Oh wait, did we actually cut it? off Wolf when she was talking about something? I didn't. Even we realize. did. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's bad. I'm so sorry. you were talking about your influences. Yeah, I don't really have a about fantasy story. books. You said that you were really influenced by stuff. Tommy, like... you're interrupting her again, dude. By uh, J.K. Rowling. Yeah. yeah, by J.K. Rowling and Tolkien and stuff. Yeah. I don't people. really have a specific influence, like. Oh, 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 guys! I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I just felt like I needed to say this. <laughs> quickly. Another oh my animation... god! Another one that really brought me back to animation Shut... was Tokyo Ghoul. I just need oh to say my it's god! Full stop. Look at that. Tokyo you scared Ghoul. Wolf away. You just scared Fucking Wolf hell. out of the podcast. Oh, shit. Oh, Fucking no. hell. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Fucking I, I, didn't, I didn't know she was going to do that. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. Please have her back. This is why I hate Sword Art Online. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> 
Okay, so while she's one. coming back, I just found the need to state that Tokyo Ghoul was another one that brought me back to enemies. <laughs> That's actually a classic. I've never watched it. My sister has, but I haven't. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that was... <laughs> Can I just say that this is probably the most high-energy episode we've had out of the... Yeah. It's good time. I'm bad for chasing out dog now. <laughs> She'll be back in a second. Yeah. Wolf. Uh, Wolf. Well, I guess it's my turn now. I mean, I technically already did since I technically interrupted to know what he was talking about Attack on Titan. But I guess another influence I have, because I'm kind of similar <laughs> to Tino in a way where I did fall Seriously? out of Monster for a long time. Oof. You did what? I fell out of manga for a long time, and but really that wasn't even like on purpose. Like I used to read manga on my iPad all the time when I was younger, mm-hmm. and my iPad kind of just like died. So you know one, you know I Tammy. Used to, I used to I read fell out manga of... rock all the time, <laughs> okay. and That's I good. would read mangas on manga rock, and. Mm. Uh, Obviously, oh. I did not at the time when my first iPad died. I just didn't know of any other sources ah, to read manga. So I started reading Western comics, and uh, you know, I read Ultimate Spider-Man, which is pretty good. And yeah. Nebs, before you say anything, okay, <laughs> big yes, balding Bendis. I like big <laughs> balding Bendis, okay, but I do see the flaws in his writing. <laughs> That's something I probably should have brought. That's something we probably should have gone into the writers' podcast, but we'll probably bring it up in the creators we don't like podcast. Since I'm pretty uh, sure. Ah yes, big really balding Bendis. Deep into it, but anyway, I like Bendis. I think he has a def- he kind of has a style where he tries to make dialogue sound natural, but sometimes it's almost to a flaw because it makes his dialogue kind of difficult to read. But he kind of like tries to make the character's speech patterns very realistic, which is not always a good thing, but it's something I can appreciate. That being said, one thing I really don't like about the Ultimate Spider-Man comic is the fact that it kind of breezes through everything that it's trying to adapt. I don't know... I don't know what Bendis is trying so hard to rush towards, but, you know... He's, yeah. he's rushing towards Miles. That's what he's rushing towards, too. He's rushing towards Miles. He, he's really desperate to kill Peter so we can get to Miles. He's, he's, and cocaine. Like, he's one of the writers who's kind of influenced my need to include heavy romance in every story I write. But at the same time, his way of handling romance is really bad. Uh, Who has a need so, for romance in a fucking... Never mind. Like, for example, the way he handled... Because, like, obviously Peter and MJ broke up, and then Peter started dating Kitty Pride. Oh, but then, right. But then what that happened... Shit. But then what happened is that Peter, if we want to be technical, literally cheated on Kitty Pride with MJ. <laughs> and Kitty Pride saw it. And then they just sort of, like, stopped dating. Then Peter and MJ broke up again, and Peter started dating Gwen, even though in the Ultimate comic, Gwen said, Peter, you're like a brother to me, but you just ignore friend that. Friendzone! <laughs> but, uh, no, like, like friend zone. no, 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 what happened was Gwen said to Peter, you're like a brother to me, but then Gwen was the one who, I have no idea where that sound is coming from. Nebs, you should probably mute yourself. But, That's uh, my... <laughs> Fucking sister. No, I'm sometimes, I'm sometimes very tempted to just mute Ned. No offense. <laughs> no offense. Why but the anyway. fu- Why so? Wait, wait, wait. Because let me, you, let me, you just make so much. You just make so much noise. You know. Wait. Let me. Let me. Let me quickly wrap up my point about. Let him this. finish. So you know, uh, you know, his way of handling romance pretty bad. But you know, to be honest, his way of handling a lot of things is pretty bad. I will actually say that as much of an influence Bendis is, like, well, he's not that much of an influence, but one of the, <laughs> like, like as, as, as 
somewhat of an influence. I still notice a lot of his flaws and his flaws as a writer, like especially in Ultimate Spider-Man, become way more apparent when you read the original Amazing Spider-Man comics. Like that's when his flaws become that much more apparent. But Which run? Still, well, I'm talking about like the thing in general because, okay, so here's what happened. I started, I read Ultimate Spider-Man first, obviously. Like that's Depressing. what really brought me into reading Spider-Man comics. But then I started reading the Dan Slott run around Ew. the big time arc. I actually thought it was okay. Um, ah, right. Yeah, the big time shits. But then eventually I went back to, uh, what do you call it? Eventually I went back to when er it was Eric Larson and Howard Mackey. And that was what led into the J. Michael Straczynski run with John Romita Jr. Um, All right. But after I finished reading the John Romita Jr., I was like, you know what? Screw this. I might as well actually go all the way back to Amazing Spider-Man number one. So as really, said, yeah, and right now I'm actually like I just finished reading the Clone Saga, so I'm actually like well on my way. I'm like what? now, I'm now actually the at, yeah, I'm now in the point in the series where Ben Riley is Spider Man. That's the shitty point of the fucking I'm in. Clone Saga. But now, but eventually, I'll probably be getting into Final Wish, and then I'll end up back in the Howard Maki. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep on reading once I get back to Howard Mackey, but anyway, now that Wolf is back, Wolf, the floor is yours. Everyone, you know, this would have been the point where having pushed the talk might have been a really good idea, but we don't. So anyway, go ahead, Wolf. <laughs> I just want to say sorry real quick, Wolf. Won't cut you off this time. She even there? Wolf? She's there. Well, she's in the call, but she's muted. I'm wondering if she's Is AFK. She... she can hear us, but we won't be able to hear her. She's muted. She might. No, we she's know muted. that. Yeah, she's <laughs> muted her mic. I'm just wondering if she's at her device, but she's not responding. Maybe she's eating. Okay, I guess we'll go. I guess to we'll Megan. Go Megan. Yeah, we'll go okay, to Megan. Okay, I feel bad. I feel bad. I. Just... I hope she's all right. Oh, oh she sorry, said, just she a second. She said she'll, she'll be here in a second. All right. I guess, wait, I'm not even full of music. I just realized a lot of the music I listen to, a lot of the artists are either like, had really short music crews where they either lasted in the 90s or the 2000s and they just sort of go up, they just fizzled into obscurity. Uh, but I guess I could say Gorillas was quite a big Yay. influence on me for a long while. And, feel bork. Uh, I feel like Gorillas helped me to find more other genres of music. Well, just like other, it helped me Wait, to expand are the my. Are Gorillas the ones who took that one Powerpuff Girls character? Yes, and, like, literally put them in their animated because band? because uh, Craig McCracken and Jamie Hewlett, I think, are like quite close friends with each other. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do research. Um, I gotta keep quiet, by the way. But basically, Gorilla has helped me. Whoa, this is sounding really ASMR now. Yeah, I've got good quality mic. Yeah. Well. Ladies Gorilla's and gentlemen, welcome to the Megan ASMR. Okay, podcast. we're done. Let her finish. I will actually release this separately from the rest of the podcast. <laughs> You're fired. Oh my god. Okay, no, so. Kidding. Gorillas basically helped me to just like it just helped me just like musically inspired me a lot uh, around in 2017 when I got into it because I used to be kind of scared of gorillas before of like feel good ink kind of freaking me out as a child especially like the part of the music video where I've got the guy's name like has that really crazy laugh and I'm just like ah oh, there's too much but then I I, I, love, I fell in love with the song. But, I don't know, just Gorillaz had quite an influence on me in that time, and it helped me to explore different types of artists, and it helped me find different, you know, stuff, you know, it helped me to, you know, expand my horizons on different artists that I found through Spotify. Spotify is a great place to find all sorts of obscure and amazing artists with 
all sorts of interesting music you can find on there and it really helps to influence me because I like being inspired by really like weird and strange music, obscure music that's just very out there. I don't mind mainstream music. I don't mind any mm. type of music as long as it, you know, I find it catchy it's or just it speaks to me in some ways or the lyrics yeah. have some strong meaning to it. Like I like lyrics that have very like you know, mm. like follow a story of sorts that relates to a character or a story I'm working with or what's going on in my life or just a mood that I want to feel. And just music is just a very important thing of my life when it comes to story writing and just how I feel. <coughs> music is power, as they say. Music is power. Yo, Tammy, uh, this Nathan Johnson version sucks. <laughs> Uh, cool. Man, I, I should do like I should one day do like a whole video one day just talking about all my favorite music inspirations. I'd watch it. So Tammy, yeah. that's what the Nathan Johnson. <laughs> Thanks. That's what the Nathan Johnson version sounds like. I fucking yeah. hate it. It is, and we're not talking about that. Wolf, it's your turn. <laughs> you go, Wolf. You time oh, to shut. Yeah. I'm sorry. I've been an absolute train wreck this whole time. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Oh, okay. <sighs> Alright, everyone be quiet. Let her speak. <laughs> so anyway, no, I'm Wait kidding. The anxious person, please. Thank you. Um, yeah, you go, you go. Yeah, I was just, I don't even have that much to say. I just have so much, I, I just can't get it out, but um, I don't really have a single influence. It's kind of all piled into one big pot of crap which is then poured out into my writing um and it kind of depends on what i'm reading at the time so if you were <laughs> to read my fanfic oh, which i do it. not recommend uh you'll notice that some chapters are written significantly different to the ones before or after it and that's because i'm you know i'm reading a certain type of book at the time like which has a different style of writing. So, you know, you have like one chat so that's like, you know, really good, really sophisticated, and then the next one is just <laughs> uh <laughs> mm. mm -hmm. that's, that's I did I get a lot of inspiration, I guess, in terms of like I think I, I, I think I sort of get that. From Marvel and Yeah. Sonic X, funnily enough, like Oh, that's the first Sonic related thing I actually watched. Um, I got uh, a lot of inspiration of, you know, how the robots work and the movement the Sonic characters actually have when I'm writing the fantasy especially. Hmm. Uh, that's pretty much it to be fair. That is literally all I can do. I can only write. <laughs> I do I do kind of relate to what you say when you say that like Sometimes your writing style will be influenced by the media that yeah. you're interacting with at the time. Because, like, I remember, like, when I was writing, like, the crappiest version of my original comic, um, <laughs> at first it kind of started out as, like, this hybrid between, like, Dragon Ball and Avatar The Last Airbender. And then over time, kind of, like, incorporating elements from Metal Gear and Kingdom Hearts and Kid Icarus. Yes. And you could Whoa. tell and you could tell that this was like mm. you could look at that and be like, okay, so at this point in time, Tammy was into this. Like uh, yeah. you were, <laughs> like you would look at it like like I wouldn't even have to tell you. You just see uh, yeah. the main character suddenly grow wings and can only fly for five minutes and is now suddenly friends with a goddess. This is Kid Icarus. Mm. Or like the main character suddenly has to fight a giant nuke launching, you know, battle tank. This was the point yeah. in which Tammy was into Metal Gear. It's mm. not really like what you said, where it's like my writing style changes. It's more like the kind of things I, like, write about. But yeah, I kind of, I kind of yeah, get it. My writing style Same. changes form. from, like, um, a while ago I was reading 1984 again. I don't know if anyone's ever read that by George. I've heard of it. But yeah, I... it's really, really uh, cool. It's really sophisticated. Big brother is always watching. Mm. And there's just one chapter in like this 15 chapter uh, fic that copies the style. Uh, 
and it sticks out like a sore thumb because I use all these big words and long sentences and stuff. Neb, nebs, and neb, it, neb, everything else is just yeah. Oh God! Nebs, me. Bro. Nebs, what's going on? Nebs, <laughs> turn your mic off. What the hell? Somebody is going just on? you know mute nebs. Oh, he no, muted himself. So. Are you saying? Oh, well, Tammy, you said about dialogue. Um, yeah, there's mm -hmm. nothing for that actually. Like, it just. I guess it just comes of, natural to you. Yeah, I kind of act it out myself to see what sounds natural and what doesn't. You yeah. know, I talk to myself a lot. When you mentioned so, that, when you mentioned that in the writing episode, yeah, I've actually been like trying to do that myself more often recently, so that my dialogue can sound as natural. Because the thing is, obviously, I would imagine most of us in this call have at least seen like Avengers yeah. movies, maybe. Yeah, like yeah, I've seen all of them. In those like the movies, first like, Avengers movie. Hell yeah. Well, I've like, seen all the Marvel, the, Marvel, the Marvel movies in general, but like in those movies, you see how witty they are, and like mm. you try to be that witty and like make your characters have that kind of banter. But like looking back at my old scripts that I wrote as a kid, I realized that like me trying to have my characters sound witty and, and stuff just wasn't natural. Mm. So like that's when I started incorporating that method that you mentioned in the previous episode yeah. where you kind of say it out loud to yourself and, you know, you know, yeah. trying to sound it out and see if, if it sounds like something that people would actually say, you know, mm. yeah. you don't want to make it sound like bad scantillations. Yeah, like, I've always know. had a witty, I've like always had witty it. banter in my Yeah. I don't know. I've always been doing that. I don't know where it came from. It's just something that I've always done. It's a, it's a really good method, I think. Mm. Yeah, it is really useful, especially with that comic, because I'm not going to lie. I, may, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing with that. I just went for it. Yeah, I, I think, no I think your, character, your character interactions in that script in Sonic Head and Issue 3, they really work very well. Um, mm. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess no one else except me and Nebs have seen her script. For some I mean, I I've... I haven't. I've, I've seen her script. It's, yeah. it's pretty good. It's a lot pretty better good. than whatever the hell I'd write. Yeah. <laughs> what do you but, mean, yeah? yeah. Well, uh, no, I was just... <laughs> and was just Shut the... <laughs> I mean, I still, I still, I'm still waiting on your uh, proposal for the Sonic CD arc, Nebs. Come on. Oh right, the fucking the thing, the that. But anyway, yeah. But uh, I guess we're on to, I guess we're on to you now, Nebs. Me? Any more, any more influence oh, on you? Ah, uh, fuck. Um, we've been, we've been going for hmm. a while actually, so we'll probably be wrapping up soon. I mm. did. Um, anyone here ever heard of uh, Vangelis? You already he mentioned Vangelis. <laughs> He's Greek. Okay, Tino, it's your turn. <laughs> uh, no, I don't think I. Uh, he's okay. He he's pretty good. He's Greek. He's. Mm -hmm. An electronic man. He's never read me. Neither can I. Wait, Tino, do you not have like anything specifically from like I, Soda I'm Online? Out. From Soda Online from, or like anything like how he writes characters or like uh, I know Soda Online has harem elements. Are you into writing harems for your characters? Uh, I feel like harem <laughs> takes out that special one-on-one -on -one connection. Harems? Two. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really like writing harems. Even Sonic Saturn is a harem to a certain degree. Oh god, that Sun Bunny thing? But dialed down just a tiny bit. Just but so if one is writing get... harem items, I think if one is to include something like that, I think it would have to do it would have to have some lemon inside because you can't Take out the one-on-one -on -one and not have some action, you know? <laughs> yeah. 
I guess that's You know true. what? You know um, what? I'm... Wait. I have a question. You know, have you seen Excel at all? Excel World? Have I seen what? Excel World. I it's have... also made by the creator of Soda Online. Is that a game? Um, no. Not yet. So I'm not going not to... But uh, supposedly, it takes place in a world where, like, characters are playing a game created by Kirito. So by it takes Kirito. Place, yeah, it takes place, like, years after Sword Art Online. I'm not sure how long. But, uh, 21 years. 20 million. I doubt it's that long. But anyway, uh, I, guess, I guess it's my turn now. I, I had a lot more influences, but it seems like everyone's kind of run out, so I'd probably just... I'd... I'm done. Okay, I'm I'm actually gonna go because <laughs> I'm hungry. So we'll probably be wrapping up because I had more influences, but I I won't say them all. I'll probably just. I'm going, I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to wrap up as soon as I leave of this podcast room that is fictional. Goodbye. But anyway, I guess one final influence from me while Nebs is gone. I guess Wait, one final influence from me would probably be uh why well, I said all the writer influences I have. Roberto Ramos. Um his art style, like anatomy wise, is kind of similar ish to Toriyama, where it kind of has like this very exaggerated muscle structure to all of his characters. Like something like Humberto Ramos is definitely what I strive for when it comes to stylized art. Um, he kind of has like this, some of his older art especially has kind of like this Disney feel to it. But if you want someone whose art has like a very strong Disney influence, kind of looks like Humberto Ramos. There's also Francisco Herrera or Carlos Megalia. Um, well, there. Well, I mean, I think both Ramos and Herrera are influenced by Megalia. So, you know, I think, I think Tino might be having connection issues. Uh, but, um, yeah, that's another artist who influences me pretty heavily, I guess. Yeah, but uh, I do have a few more, but I think everyone else is pretty much tapped out now, so I guess we'll be closing out. Mm. Um, but uh, really yeah. Wait, what was that one? Yeah. Sorry, oh, yeah. um, anything actually influences my art? Uh, you know what can be classed as it? I've put some things in, you know, the son, the actual Sonic Saturn server before. I've seen uh, it. It's, it's I've developing. Got, I've got no idea what style this is. It's just I think a base. I'm not gonna lie. The, 3D the Sonic fact that you actually like... have the confidence to do digital art, uh, <laughs> I find admirable all in its own because I just find doing digital art to be an absolute pain in the ass to do. Even though I, I really, really want to do did it. it with my just my finger, I'm actually really proud to be fair. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh I don't know. I think I've just been going through a good streak recently. I don't know what's been happening. Yeah. But uh, oh, I think it's Tino. He's trying to rejoin because I think he's having some connection issues. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah, back. I'm back. Okay. Yeah, yep. I'm back. Okay, so I guess unless anyone else has any more influences, I guess we'll be wrapping up. <laughs> don't have any more influences. I actually feel like I probably accidentally ended up having people list more influences than me but then i still talked the most anyway so it doesn't really matter because <laughs> you're the host of the show bro yeah but uh all right well i guess we'll just quickly go by plugging in where people can find our works i guess we'll go with you first tino since you're the newest guy to appear on this podcast uh where can people find your work i mean uh, I'll, yeah, probably, you can I'll probably link it in the description but just say it anyway <laughs> you can find me on www.fanfiction.net under the title of to be day that is the username that i'm using mm -hmm. okay um megan where can they find you 
You can f oh, okay. Um, you can find me. Um, wait, is my mouse work? Is my headphones yeah. work? Okay. Yeah, you're fine. You can find me on YouTube.com MC Gemstone for all your Sonic comic needs. But my channel is having a hiatus at the moment due to the incident I was in. Check out my latest video, what happened, mm -hmm. but <clears throat> I'm also at home. So, uh, you know, you can follow me on other places like Twitter or Instagram. You know, they're there. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's kind of it for me. Wolf, where can people find your work? You can find me on fanfiction.net uh, under the username of Wolf of Theta. Is it Theta or Theta? I never actually bothered finding that out. I think it's Theta, isn't it? Yeah, it's in the, just, the Greek you can send me a link and I'll put it in the description. <laughs> no idea. Uh, I'm also on Twitter. I've forgotten my Twitter name, but I am on Twitter. So good luck finding that. I'm sorry, I didn't charge you. I'm constantly messaging you. That's how depressed he is. Oh, what? Not again. Uh, Megan, we can hear what you're talking about, and I don't think it's something we're supposed to be hearing. I'm not telling you. 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 I'm not no, that won't help. He really is. He really is hiding it this whole time. I have to go and get some medical. I have some. It's like okay. Well, I guess the best part, the best solution, is just to wrap this up as quickly as possible. As for me, you can find me on DeviantArt at Amazing Artist Red, on Instagram at Tammy Likes to Draw. Twitter is also Tammy, Tammy Likes to Draw, and you can find me on YouTube at Just Gaming 101 unless I find a way to change that username because everyone keeps on reminding me how Just sounds like Jizz. But anyway, this has been the Pen Pals Podcast. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you guys next oh, Right, I'm back. Neb, you back. Neb, do you have anything you want to... Do you have anything you want to plug? Uh, Ken Penders did nothing wrong. Uh, my oh, YouTube channel. I, I don't know. Yeah. Because uh, I don't want to, like, maybe not Meg. I know, but I don't Not know. my Twitter, though. Meg. Not my Twitter. My okay. Twitter is filled with uh, Inflin Hanging. You know how much everyone loves that. <laughs> we will definitely be going into that in either the Sonic the Hedgehog podcast or the Creators We Don't Like podcast. But anyway, this has been your host, Tammy Likes to Draw, signing off. Debs, please uh, shut down the crank. Uh...